Okay, so I'm going to be cutting out these cute cobwebs with the help of my Cricut machine. You could use the Cricut Maker and the Explorer, even the Joy machine, you just have to scale it a little smaller. You'll want to use a cardstock for this, 65 pound weighted, or you could also use like a glitter cardstock. I purchased my glitter cardstock at my local craft store. Michaels, Joann's, all those stores have lots of great um, cardstock options that you can check out. I prefer Michaels Craft Store, which is my personal favorite. So in addition to that, you'll also want to potentially have a hot glue gun on hand just to sort of like tack it in place kind of and keep things from scooting around as we build the banner and then you'll either want to have some sort of like black ribbon or maybe some baker's twine i wish i had black baker's twine on hand but at this time i do not so i'm going to be using white which i think will still work really well because it's going to blend into the white of my mantle that i'm hanging this on now as far as the length and the size of what you're cutting that's completely up to your preference where are you hanging this how long do you want the banner to be i would just encourage you to play around with scaling the cobwebs so that they're not all the same size and they look different. These cobweb SVGs can be found for free below in the video description. If you're reading this in the blog post, then you can just check out um, the supply section and I will give you a link to these SVG files, which are free for you to use. So I've already loaded these templates into Design Space and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out on my Cricut machine. I've already scaled my cobwebs to the desired size. That's completely up to your preference here. So you can see I've done them in a few different sizes. Um, that just depends on you know, where you're hanging it or what you're using them for. So after I have uploaded the images into Design Space, which you can download for free below, then you will go ahead and place your cardstock and then load your mat. If you're using just a standard 65 pound weight cardstock, you would select medium cardstock in Cricut Design Space. I am using a glitter cardstock though. So I am gonna be selecting the glitter cardstock material setting so that my machine cuts at the correct pressure when I'm doing this. And when that play go button starts flashing, yours might also look like a Cricut icon button. You'll press that to proceed with the cut. All right, so now that my cobwebs are all cut out, I have a variety of sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and start making this banner. I'm gonna choose my white baker's twine here just because I want it to be very subtle and I want it to look like the cobwebs are basically hanging by themselves. So that's why I decided to opt for this instead of the, the black ribbon, but it's completely your choice. So I'm gonna unravel quite a bit of this. You wanna go longer than what you intend on actually using in your final banner. So if you want a five foot banner, I recommend cutting six feet or so. So you have plenty of twine to work with. All right, and I'm gonna choose one end here. So I'm just gonna tie a little loop here so that I have something to hang from if I'm using a command hook or something like that. Now I have a nice little loop I can hang this banner from. This is my ending point here. And the other side is gonna be where we add on all of our cobwebs. So the first thing you need to think about is which cobwebs did you cut out? What size did you cut them at? For example, this is my largest cobweb. So it's gonna go in the center. So I know I'm not starting with this. I'm gonna actually start with some of the corner cobwebs and these pieces here, because that to me is gonna make the most sense as far as what's gonna go on the far end. So what I'm gonna do to string this is I'm gonna come in from the back side here and pull the baker's twine or ribbon through. And then I'm gonna come through one more time sort of like you're sewing with a needle. And then that way it's gonna hang forward like this. It's not gonna wanna fall where it's facing this direction. You want it to obviously face the correct way. So what we need to do now is just pull this down to where that loop was on the other end. Okay, there we go. Now I have that. And now we're gonna go back and add our next piece on. I'm gonna do this one for my next piece. I'm gonna come in from the back and through and then down through another one and then move this all the way down. And I want there to be a little space between mine and until you've added everything, you don't need to worry about adjusting the space because in order to adjust the space, we're gonna use a little bit of hot glue to sort of tack it and hold it in its position on the back side. But first we need to get everything on. So I'm gonna take a look at all of my cobwebs see which ones I want to add next. I think I'm going to go ahead and add this one next. I think 
about varying the cobwebs, varying the sizes of them to make everything look, you know, kind of nice and symmetrical. If you did all one cobweb style, this might be a little bit easier. I'm mixing them all together for everything that was in that. And things will get a little bit tangly at points in time, which seems appropriate considering that we're working with cobwebs. So I'm gonna go ahead and start back up here again. And I'm going to grab, I think, this one next. All right, I know I'm about halfway, so I'm gonna add my nice big cobweb on now, which is gonna be sort of my center point. All right, and I have five cobwebs on the other side of this big piece, so I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, so once you get to this point, you wanna spread everything out. You wanna kind of get an idea of how long is it? Did you have enough pieces put on? All of that stuff. And then you can just leave it as is and hang it up and then just adjust things once it's being once it's hung up. I like to go in on the backside and add just little dots of glue so things don't shift around on me so much and it's not so messy. So all I would do, for example, is right here, I would look on the backside and where the, uh, where the baker's twine is hitting on the back, I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue right over it and it'll just keep that sort of tacked in place and you won't be able to see it at all. I'm just sort of pressing that baker's twine right into my little dot of glue on the back side there. And it's just gonna hold that baker's twine in place to keep things from scooting all around on you. So just take a few moments to do that with the entire banner and then you'll be ready to hang it up. The last step here is just to trim down your extra baker's twine or ribbon, set that off to the side, and then you'll wanna add your final loop on here. So I'm just gonna flip that over and make a loop. And then if there's any extra hanging down, you can also trim that off. Now it's time to hang up our cobweb banner. 